Hi, I'm Dad. I mean Brad. We are in a weird time for VR hardware. We constantly see these little iterations per generation, but really, a lot of the headsets come out, I always see people talking about how they feel we are not really in the Gen 2 of VR hardware. And on this channel, we covered a lot of different things that the Index 2 may or will probably have. And while I covered a bunch of the important things such as eye tracking and body tracking, and things such as wireless or standalone, none of these features really scream out to me as being next-gen VR. Well, today, this video will change all of that. A huge, and I mean a huge amount of patents last week dropped that were submitted all in February of this year. They mostly talk about a lot of the lens and display systems we'll see in the Index 2. And let me tell you, these are what's going to make the Index 2 the next gen of VR hardware. And due to that, this will be one of the most exciting videos I'll ever make. So I urge you, if you are really fascinated in seeing how the Index 2 will really blow you away, and I really do believe these are the features that will blow you away more than anything, then please straddle up, get a beer, or a Pepsi, and just have a good time. Because we're about to dive deep. So before I go into all the little things, I want to of course remind people that I do not expect Valve to really target the same price range as the Oculus Quest 2 for example. Valve doesn't really need to if you think about it. They want to push PC VR to the next level, and really VR in general. And considering so many people who are buying this $300 Oculus Quest 2 and plugging in their headsets to Steam VR, where it's the pretty much the top VR headset connected to Steam every month, I don't see why Valve needs to compete. People are wanting more. The Quest 2 has been a gateway drug to VR for a lot of people, and Valve has kind of always been there to be like, hey, you want that next step? We got some really cool hardware for you. And while I of course believe that VR content is somewhat lacking, in a way, I'm not fully convinced that better software is what's going to make VR content more exciting. My belief is, if we make some huge strides in the actual hardware we're using to play the software we already have, it will actually make immersion 10 times greater. I mean, hey, when I got my Index after using the HTC Vive for a couple years, I went back and played my library and it really felt like I was a step closer to really the way these games were meant to be played, even if the content wasn't exactly exciting. It's important to bring this up because this lens system that they're going to be using in the Index 2 will drastically change every user's experience. So I never really mentioned much about lenses in the Index 2 in any of my other videos. And the main reason was, they always kind of referred to it as a pancake lens system, but never really dove into any detail on how it would be. A pancake lens system is exactly as it sounds. It's a bunch of very thin lens stacked on top of each other like a actual plate of pancakes. And while that lens system doesn't sound exciting, there's actually going to be amazing benefits with what they're doing with these lens. Polarizers! Have you heard of those? Well, you might have actually been holding polarizers for literally decades. Or at least staring at polarizers even more longer than that. They are basically these liquid crystal pieces that are transparent and allow light to either go through or not go through, given off by pixels. That's a very layman's way to explain polarizers, but yeah, that's pretty much what they do. Your smartphone might have a polarizer on it, especially if it's an LCD display. Even a lot of OLED displays have polarizers, except a lot of them are starting to get rid of them slowly. So of the 11 patents, about 8 of them mentioned Valve using polarizers for a multitude of reasons. The biggest use case was to actually put polarizers in between these pancake lens I was mentioning before. But why? You know, I am totally aware that I kind of go back and forth when I'm talking about things, but it's very important to explain to new people in a VR what these technologies are. Verifocal Lens Anyone that has been an enthusiast or has been really following the VR industry probably got a little excited when I say those words. And yes, consumer verifocal is exactly what Valve is looking to do. 
Oculus a couple years ago showed a lot of different experiments called Half Dome, which later led to Half Dome 3. I'm going to actually link a video in my description if you want to dive more into what that is, and it might actually ruin VR currently for you, because you'll realize, wow, current VR sucks. But what Verifocal allows you to do is, let's say I have an anime girl held in my hand. Well, in real life, if you focus on this anime girl, everything except the anime girl will come out of focus, right? That is how your eyes work. Your eyes can sort of change the focal length to focus on an object. Well, VR as it currently stands is not like that at all. VR headsets have a set focal length, which means you can have an object close to you and it will still be blurry. You have to kind of keep the object at a certain distance for really get the full actual clarity of that object in VR. Earlier experiments in the industry for making varifocal lenses would allow motors to actually move lenses away and close to your eyes to sort of get that captured focal distance. But that was very loud and unreliable. And then people started realizing, what if we use this old technology polarizers to actually allow the light displays to capture light at different levels to do the same effect without any moving parts. And that's what Valve is doing. Seriously, that's what they're doing. So imagine you're in Half-Life Alex. You pick up this extremely high textured piece of bread, for example. You hold it up to your eyes. Not only will the object focus clearly only on the object near you and make everything else in the background blurry, but they'll also be able to do things such as raise the resolution of the object you're looking at while also making the actual textures get, really pop out more. Because in real life, when you have something close to your eyes, it is the most amount of detail you can see of that object. And as you move it away from your eyes, you see less detail. Verifocal lenses will do this. Some of you may be wondering, well, Brad, why haven't we had verifocal lenses before this? And I'm glad you asked, because you know how I've been screaming about eye tracking and why it's so important? Verifocal lenses are only possible if you have eye tracking built into a headset. So when Valve has always mentioned eye tracking in every single patent leading up to this point, we now know why. The biggest reason for that, and there's honestly a lot of reasons why eye tracking is very important for VR, but Verifocal literally relies on eye tracking. I talked about how Valve is doing eye tracking in my last Index 2 video, it's actually different than a lot of the eye tracking ways that are happening right now with other VR headsets, such as the HTC Vive Pro I or even the Reverb G2 Omnicept. Now Valve is not only trying to add varifocal lenses, which by itself is already amazing, there's another really cool thing you can do with varifocal lenses. Valve has always tried, at least, to be very comfortable when they release hardware. A big example of this is the fact that they still have the displays actually separate, so you can actually move the displays farther apart from each other for people with maybe wide or much less than wide IPDs. Well, with eye tracking, you can actually measure IPD automatically because again, with eye tracking, they can see how far away the pupils are from each other. And even there's a patent release that not only allows the eye tracking to tell the user what their IPD is, but there's actual motors that could be in the headset that adjusts it for you by itself. That removes one huge layer of friction. There's been so many, so many people I've talked to that ended up actually using VR for years on the wrong IPD. Using a wrong IPD just really isn't good for you. Um, you can get sick more and it kind of just isn't good for your eyes in a way. But not only that, do you wear glasses or contacts? Do you hate VR because you wear glasses or contacts? Well, guess what? Valve has been patenting this for a while, but they really explain and go into detail of why this is possible. If you are nearsighted or farsighted, you will not have to wear glasses or anything with the Index 2 lens system. Due to the fact that they can actually change the focal length and they have a special corrective lens inside the headset, they talk about how you can literally set your prescription level so it can actually adapt to your prescription level in real life. This is very important, probably for one reason. The eye tracking system I explained they're using gives off light. And if a user is using glasses, 
that might make the reflections given off from your eyes be more inaccurate. So it's very important for Valve to make sure there's less friction for the eye tracking system to work. If the eye tracking system doesn't work, then all the benefits of eye tracking, especially for the varifocal lenses, just won't work. So imagine that. You hate VR because you wear glasses. You will not hate the Index 2. I'm just imagining like all the glasses users that are constantly on Reddit asking, is this headset good for my glasses? Or I have a thick frame, can I fit in these lens? Like it, I, I'm happy for you guys. I don't wear glasses, but I'm happy for you all when it makes it into a product. So yeah, we talked about how these lens system will make depth very realistic, uh, allow for things such as phobia rendering, of course, uh, social VR eye tracking, but it also actually improves a lot of the artifacting that displays give. I won't go into that very much, but I just want to say there's a lot of small things that people don't even realize that displays kind of give because they weren't really designed for VR in mind. And these lens systems will be able to compensate for those weird artifacting in the headset. Displays. Speaking of displays, in my last Index 2 video, I talked about how the patent started mentioning their use of OLED. And of course, a lot of people were very confused because the actual old generation VR headsets, such as the ACC Vive, for example, and the Oculus Rift CB1, they used OLED. But the industry started shifting to LCDs because OLED had a lot of problems, especially with screen door effect and ghosting. But then I started seeing all the newer patents converge on the idea that, hey, we are going right back into the OLED territory for VR. So I started doing a lot of different studies and it all makes sense. I found a company that's actually been working with not only Valve, but multiple companies. Uh, Valve has actually sponsored them a few years ago to actually develop this new type of display, but they are actually making something called OLED micro displays. They are these tiny displays that really are amazing. The PPD for these displays can be insanely high and they can still retain the same 120 hertz, at least the older version prototype that I'm showing in this chart, it could have that. Not only that, is the brightness levels for these newer generation OLED micro displays are incredibly high. In a way, you can sort of have something like HDR, which again, is very accurate in very beautiful colors. OLED has already had great colors, uh, and great blacks for that matter. Great contrast, great everything. So that's why a lot of users I see online, especially in the enthusiast PC VR sector, they've been just so sad to see OLED abandoned. Well, we know PSVR 2 is apparently going to use OLED, and I'm sure it's actually going to be the same sort of displays I'm talking about that Valve is looking into using. You might be asking, what about FOV? Well, that's another thing I want to talk about about the correction lens system, is it seems that with this new lens system, everyone will be able to have a similar FOV, if not the exact same. In a way, this is actually kind of good. It will still be a higher FOV than the Oculus Quest 2 at least. I'm not sure if we'll be able to get to as close as the current index when it comes to getting it smashed up against your face for some people. Uh, depends on your head shape. But with these corrective lenses, they can actually sort of give everyone the same FOV. It's hard to explain this concept entirely, but let me tell you, even if you have a higher FOV and the index 2 has a slightly lower FOV than what you're used to, the varifocal lenses alone will just make you not care. Because it kind of sucks when you think about the people that have just really certain face shapes that don't allow them to put the lenses up to their face, and they get a much lesser experience. So allowing the lens to actually compensate for a weird, <laughs> I say weird, but you know what I mean, face shape to get a good FOV is incredibly important. Now there's just a few more tidbits I want to cover before I just end this whole video. The same type of polarizers that we're sort of seeing used for lens, Valve is pretty much placing on all their tracking system sensors as well to sort of combat against reflections because, you know, you can never have a mirror inside a place, say, with Lighthouse or the new tracking system because it would kind of screw up the laser sweeps. So Valve realized, hey, let's place these polarizers on the actual angle detective sensors. So reflections are not an issue. That means more accurate tracking. Markerless inside out tracking. And finally, the most impressive or most surprising example of using this polarizing is for pass through cameras. The Valve Index has pass through cameras, but it's never really been useful in my opinion. 
they even introduced something called Room View 3D, which was kind of a way to make your environment generate 3D models based on the objects in your room to add more depth to what you're seeing in your sort of play area. However, it was never really that good. And when I read this patent about how they're going to add polarizers to allow much more accurate depth data sort of given to the camera data injected to the headset. Yeah, it seems like Room View 3D alone, maybe more future ideas such as what Oculus Quest 2's pass-through API is doing, will be a feature in the, uh, the in Valve Index 2. Oh, what a long video. I don't know how these videos are long. It's really because there's just so much information and I still had to cut off a lot of really details and information. We're talking about 11 patents that was dropped all in one day from February, released literally last week. These videos are a lot of hard work for me and I really cannot explain how happy I am that are not only people are coming out of the woodwork to help me with these videos, such as Thundy who literally made all these beautiful animations, um, really in short notice and just for free. Thank you, Thundy. Uh, I put his stuff in the description. And just people always wanting to sh make sure I am caught up with everything. I could not do these videos without you, especially you viewers who are enjoying these videos and leaving comments and liking it. So thank you. I really do enjoy covering this stuff, but again, the better these videos do, it makes all that countless hours of reading patents truly worth it. So yeah, that's just the Index 2 lenses and display systems. I'm so excited, guys. When this thing actually does hit, it's literally going to be an industry-breaking device. We will literally look at the current Index and put it on after using the Index 2 and think, wow, I can't believe we use this piece of crap. Thanks for watching everyone, and I hope you have a marvelous day. Make sure you look at things. You'll probably notice that everything has depth now, after this video.